more and more equipment runs on networks originally meant for computers. Soon it's going to be just about all of our audio equipment. As audio people, how do we come to terms with how the industry is changing and get to grips with this networking stuff? I'm Andrew, welcome to Offshore Audio. You just need to know the basics of networking to get something like a Dante network up and running. So that's what you'll learn in this video, the basics of networking for audio specifically. If you're just setting up a Dante network, you might want to check out my Dante network cheat sheet to get set up and going really quickly. You're not going to be a networking god by the end of this video, but you will have a sort of basic understanding so that you know what's happening under the hood. Let's dive in. So to start with, we need to get this idea of digital audio in our heads, right? Analog audio is this continuous waveform, right? Big is loud, small is not loud, medium is medium volume. In digital, it's still a voltage. Big equals one, low equals zero, there is no medium. And as we probably know by this point in 2023, computers can communicate using ones and zeros. Hey presto, digital audio. So then we have a network, right? What's a network? It's just a bunch of stuff connected together. In this case, using computer cables, using CAT cables. And we can send information, data, ones and zeros, in this case, audio data, back and forth along that network. So why is that good? Well, it's really flexible. It's really easy to deploy. It's really lightweight. Compared to analog signal cable, you can get like 100 meters of CAT cable and it doesn't weigh that much at all. It's also really easy to reconfigure the network. If someone suddenly wants a recording of the entire gig, you can just connect a laptop and click a few buttons and suddenly they've got a whole feed from your mixer without having to connect 48 XLR cables. In fact, you're probably already using it. Things like Dante have been in existence for well over 10 years and Yamaha mixers have been using them as standard since the QL series, I think, so at least 10 years at this point. So how does audio data move on a network? It's transferred in things that we call packets, right? And it's as simple as it sounds. It's just sending the audio bit by bit. Think about a radio, you know, a walkie talkie, command to control over, and then it goes control, I read you, over. And then they give their message and then they say, over to allow the other person to give their message. When the communication is done, they say over and out. We all know that, right? It's the same thing with digital audio on a network, right? It's just the mixer says mixer to stage box, over. Stage box reads you, over. Over. Stage box reads you, over. We do that many, many hundreds of thousands of times a second and we build up the audio picture by sending it bit by bit. We also have the possibility to send control data over this network, right? So what that means is that in between the spontaneous Beethoven that, that is being sent from the mixer to the stage box and then the speakers, we're also able to say mixer to stage box, stage box read you, over. Then the mixer can ask what is the gain or turn up the gain on channel one and then the stage box can carry out that action. So basically it's all sent in little bits. Hi, I'm going to communicate with you. Great, please communicate with me. Message. Thank you. There's two different types of networked audio, at least in the audio and mixer world, and that's point-to-point -point sort of multi-channel audio and networked audio or audio over IP. So you've probably heard of IP address. What are they? It's just a number that we use to communicate on a network. You've probably seen it. It's a big long number split into four pieces, right? And that piece, each piece goes from zero to 255. The best way I can think to explain it is it's like a phone number. Everyone's got a mobile phone, right? Everyone with a mobile phone has a phone number. If you want to send a message to your friend, then you type in their phone number, you type their message, and then you click send. Your friend receives the message on their phone. They see who has sent it from your phone number, or your name usually, and then they open the message, they read it, and they can decide to reply or take action on the message. So the same with IP addresses. IP addresses are phone numbers for the devices on the network. So when your mixer wants to send audio data to a laptop recording via Dante, it has to know the phone number, the IP address, the other device connected to the same network. Now you've probably seen the line underneath IP addresses, subnet masks. What are they? The short answer is they are the area code. If you have a phone number and you live in, let's say, the US, you just type your friend's phone number in and then you click call and you're connected to them straight away. No faff. But if you want to talk to your friend in the UK, for example, you need to enter the area code for the UK, right? Plus four, four, before you enter the phone number in. So you have these two separate sections, the area code and the phone number. That is the network where this phone number is located and then the identifying number on that network. By typing that number in, you tell your phone network, hey, 
could you just call up the UK and then transfer this message to their network? And the phone network goes, okay. The difference between the phone numbers and IP addresses is that the area code is baked into the IP address, right? The length of the IP address does not change, but the section of it which dictates the area code changes. And we use the subnet mask to dictate how much of the IP address is the area code. If I were to write an IP address of 10, 10, 10, 10, and then a subnet mask of 255, 000, 0, 0, that would mean that this first 10 here, that is the area code, okay? Follow me? Any device on the network with 10 as the first section of their IP address can now communicate freely with other devices with 10 at the start because they are in the same area. They're in the same country. They're on the same network. If there was a device with 11 at the start as the first section of the IP address, then they would need to use a router. In this case, the router is just the phone company, right? It's just the intermediary device that we need to connect to and need to talk to to reach other networks. With audio devices, we don't tend to have so many things connected to the network. So we don't need so many IP addresses. We don't need so many phone numbers. So it's normal that our subnet mask is 255 255 255 0. That means the first three sections of the IP address are the area code, the network. And then the last section here allows 255 numbers for those devices. That's like 255 phone numbers within that country. So 255 devices can communicate easily with each other without a router. And then you can make loads of these subdivisions and create different sub network that communicate via router. So that's a bit of background on IP addresses. Let's talk about the practical, how to connect stuff up, what to set the settings as. So as we mentioned before, there's this point to point multi-channel audio, and then there's audio over IP. What can you network together with something like a router? It has to have an IP address. Standards like AES 50 don't have an IP address. They cannot send their data through the router. It just gets lost. It doesn't get to the destination because it doesn't have the right information, the phone number, the area code, for example. But things like Dante do. That's what makes Dante so cool. You can just connect a bunch of stuff together and like quite a large network and it all talks to each other. So how do we set it all up? You need to make sure that all of your devices are connected together using CAT cable. And you need to make sure that you're using the right standard of CAT cable. At the time of making this, CAT 5E or higher tends to be fine for almost all audio applications. If you use a cable which is not of a high enough standard, then you'll get audio dropouts or you won't be able to transfer as much audio per second as you need to. You can either connect everything together in series, that is plug cable into one device and then out of one device into the next device or you can connect them together using a router. If you're using a router, this is when the audio needs to use IP. It needs to be something like Dante, so it can communicate using the router. If you go into the network settings on your devices, you should be able to enable automatic IP or something called DHCP, Dynamic Host Control Protocol. All that means is that the network is going to decide what each device gets as an IP address itself. It's like the phone company dishing out a phone number to you without asking you what you want versus you requesting a custom phone number. Let's say you want to connect a computer to your device to this network so that you can send audio back and forth using Dante or so that you can monitor your wireless receivers using wireless workbench. You need to make sure that that computer is also on the same network. Normally, your network is set to DHCP on your computer as well. But if it's not, then you can just go to your network settings, click to set your IP address manually, and then double check what the network is on the devices that are currently communicating. So just to give a real world example of that, right? You might have Dante Audio running on one network, which has the address 10, 10, 10, 10. You might also have control data for wireless receivers, your ULXD or something, running on another network, which is 12, 10, 10, 10. Now they could both be connected with a router that you connect your computer to. If you're on DHCP on your computer, it will pick one of those networks to be a part of, but it won't be able to communicate with both of them. So at that point, you need to make sure that your computer is on 10, 10, 10 something to be able to communicate with the Dante network. And if you want to communicate with the wireless network, then you need to be on 12, 10, 10, something. You get me? I hope that makes sense. So in short, connect everything together using CAT cables, make sure it's all on DHCP and you should be good to go. If not, double check that you have the right IP addresses, 
check the subnet mask to see what the area code is and that you are in the right area. I hope that was helpful. Leave me a comment and let me know if this did answer any questions. Did it create any more questions for you? I'm not a network expert either, but maybe we can start a conversation around this stuff. I'll leave some videos around here that YouTube thinks are cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.